Hi everyone, my name is Alessia, I am a photographer. Today I will show you how to take close-up portraits, talk about retouching, demonstrate how to create a double exposure photo and explain how to simulate double exposure in Photoshop. Let's start with portrait photography. Technically, these are very simple photos. We need very soft light and there should be enough of it. We took the photos against a white wall in my apartment. We used natural light, but I also had a backup option. I will talk about it a bit later. Pay attention to the position of the model's face relative to the light. In our case, the window. The light falls from the side, but it must also reach the other eye and the cheek that is farther from the window. To achieve this, the model should be turned towards the window at an angle of about 45 degrees. You can also slightly illuminate the side of the model's face that is farther from the light with a reflector. I knew in advance that I would be doing warmer editing, so I used the gold reflector. The white would work as well. Depending on your plans, you might prefer the silver reflector if you want to create cooler photos. For very close-up portraits, I used a 90mm lens. I will attach the camera setting to the photos. This lens is better suited to avoid distorting the proportions of the face. For more distant portraits and profile portraits, I choose a 50mm lens. I also want to point out that I used an aperture setting of 2.2, even though all my lenses have a maximum aperture of 1.8. I did this to avoid excessive blurring and to retain more skin textures, while still maintaining depth in the photos. For the next shots, we tied the hair into a bun. I knew in advance which double exposure simulation collages I planned to create, and for some of them it was necessary to highlight the shoulders and neck. In this case, the hair would have been in the way. I love it when models pose in motion. You can see that in my other videos. However, this approach is unsuitable for portrait photography. The photographer needs to have full control over the pose, and posing for such photos is quite static. Next, we took some extreme close-up portraits. In this, you can notice the very precise shooting angle. It's crucial in such photos that the nose doesn't go beyond the cheek's boundary. This is a very common mistake that can definitely ruin your portrait. In the next shots, I moved relative to the light and the model to create more contrasty photos. In our case, the entire room has white walls, and we didn't use any darkness, light blockers and flags. Therefore, even photos from this angle are quite well lit. We also get a reflected highlight on the back, as if it's additionally illuminated. But this is just a light reflecting of the wall. In the next portraits, I seated the model on a chair. I did this to have the opportunity to shoot from a higher angle. When shooting from a higher angle, always pay attention to the model's neck. If the model has a short neck, this angle may not be suitable. But if you really want to use it, you can ask the model to tilt her head back slightly. Another way to use a reflector is from below and slightly to the side. Never use a reflector in this way when shooting with harsh light. This method is suitable only for photos with soft light. Here we use the reflector to soften shadows from below and from the right side. And here is my backup light option. For these photos I aim the flash and the wall. This way we get very soft and diffused light, because the entire wall becomes a light source. But pay attention to the settings. Here the aperture value is 5. This gives us more sharpness and clarity in the photo, however it sacrifices depth in the image. Let's move on to the photos with double exposure. Many cameras have a built-in double exposure function, and that's what we used. The problem with this approach is that the frames are merged directly in the camera, and you won't be able to correct them later. That's why we took several separate photos and I merged them in post-processing. To do this, I simply overlaid one frame on another with 50% opacity. 
In post-processing, you can adjust the size and position of the frames relative to each other. You can also highlight certain elements, such as eyes, with contrast adjustments, for example. We also created another shot against the sky backdrop. I merged the photos in the editor. In my opinion, such photos look best in black and white. Now please give a like and let's move on to retouching photos. Let's start with retouching close-up portraits. First, using the patch tool, I remove obvious defects such as pimples, skin folds and unwanted hairs. Then I add a bit of sharpness to eyes and lips. We use frequency separation to smooth out the skin. If you are not familiar with frequency separation, I've prepared a special video with instructions. You can watch it by clicking the pop-up or using the link in the video description. Next, we'll add some dodge and burn in a very simple way. Create a new empty layer. On it, use a soft brush with 100% opacity to roughly paint the light and shadow areas. Change the layer blending mode to soft light. Then in the filter menu, go to Blur, Gaussian Blur and adjust the values so that the edges of the lines we drew are not visible. This is how you can retouch a portrait in just a couple of minutes. Of course, the quality of the original image, the cleanliness of the model's face and the quality of the light in the photo are important factors. And I'll show you how to create a double exposure effect in retouching. It's not difficult, but you need to know a couple of tricks. Firstly, such photos look best in black and white. However, we'll convert them to black and white specifically for each photo. We open our portrait in Photoshop and go to the Camera Raw filter. Then we select the monochrome profile. In the black and white mix mode, we drag the sliders for red, orange and yellow colors to the left. In the light tab, we increase the contrast. We want the skin to be dark enough while keeping the background white. We create a duplicate layer. On the new layer, we select the object and then we add a mask to the selection. Now we take an image of an urban landscape and also go to Camera Raw to make the photo black and white and very contrasty. We select the landscape image and paste it on top of our portrait. We right-click on the layer and choose Create Clipping Mask. Then we select the landscape layer and transform it, stretching it to cover the entire portrait. We adjust the layer's opacity. I choose 46%. Now I want to add some birds to the photo. To do this, we need to clear the space for them. We use a black brush to paint over the layer mask of the portrait layer. Then we remove the same area on the background layer using 100% stamp tool. Next, we select the birds from chosen image and paste them onto our photo. I decided to darken the photo a bit more, so I added a levels adjustment layer and moved the central point to the right. I also added a bit more sharpness to the eyes and nose and blurred the birds slightly. This is the final result we have achieved. Let me quickly show a couple more examples. On this photo we'll be adding clouds. We'll also convert the portrait and the clouds to black and white, adding contrast. We overlay the photo with opacity of 65% and create a clipping mask. Then on the mask I remove the clouds from the left side of the model and vice versa, using a white brush add them to the photo on the right. The same procedure applies to the photo with the mountain and the city.
Thank you for watching. If you have any questions, feel free to ask them in the comments. And don't forget to subscribe to the channel. Here I talk about interesting photoshoots and GIF photography tips.